regularly tour with BB and another uh, blues artist named Freddie King under the banner, The Kings of Blues. And on that album in 1971, Albert King recorded a song called, Everybody Wants to Go to Heaven, But Nobody Wants to Die. Everybody wants to laugh, but nobody wants to cry. Everybody want to hear the truth, but yet everybody wants to tell a lie. Everybody want to know the reason without even asking why. You know, everybody want to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. The song that fits in perfectly with one of the main themes of today's gospel. This is the chapter of John before the big passion drama starts. Jesus knows what is going to happen. And more importantly, Jesus knows why it is all going to happen. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. That being said, Jesus is more than a little anxious. He knows the torture, the suffering, the death that await him around the corner. Even Jesus did not want to die. And in many ways, I think a lot of us can relate to that reluctance. I would venture to say all of us can relate to that reluctance. You know, we come to church to hear the good news, not troubling news. That's what Twitter is for, <laughs> or X, whatever they're calling it nowadays. And on some level, we always have this lurking suspicion, fear of the big D death around the corner. And we experience the big D death when we lose loved ones, when we get that very troubling diagnosis. But at the same time, our lives are also dominated by an endless series of small D deaths as well. The death of our youth, our looks, the number of cheeseburgers we can eat without consequences, our free time, our work, particular relationships. We all have a lot of small d deaths, and that is part of our human existence as well. I mean, as I was reading this, it kind of reminded me of my own vocation story. For a long time, a very, very long time, I did not want to become a priest. I was kind of famous for it, so much to the point where I was, I sometimes would joke that on my ordination mass that there would be a lot of 20s being passed across the aisle, depending on whether or not I was actually going to go through with it. And part of my resistance had to do with some of the ways in which I needed to grow up. And part of the things were giving up certain things that I would have to give up that I didn't particularly want to give up like watching Meet the Press on Sunday mornings without having a morning job to go to on Sundays. <laughs> and those resistances were the parts of myself that needed to small d die and sometimes still need to die in order to go to, in order to become more of the person that God has created me to be. As it's true for all of us, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. But we are reminded throughout scripture and throughout our lives, if we're paying attention, that we are never led through periods of death, whether it's big D or small D, without being asked to grow. Without, and we are being asked to grow, and we have to undergo these deaths so that God can do something new. It's why Jeremiah says in the first reading today, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers. And that is part of the reason we have Lent, so we can lean into these small d deaths. 
In order to truly have Easter in our lives, we have to come to terms with those parts of ourselves, whether they're our individual selves or our communal selves, that we still need to die to. And those things that we need to die to will vary greatly depending on who we are. For many of us, God may be challenging us to stop and have a conversation with the homeless person we pass by instead of when we would rather just go to church and just pray by ourselves. For others, God may be challenging us to pray more when we'd rather just be focused on our work or watching TV. For some, God may be challenging us to stop talking and listen more when we'd rather be proclaiming our own opinions. For others, God may be challenging us to loudly speak up when everyone else wants us, to main, us, wants us to maintain a convenient but ignorant silence. Dying to those parts of ourselves, either individually or collectively, is hard work. Even after we've ha learned the, the hard lessons of sacrifice and loss, the ancient Israelites would have to spend more time in bondage by the Babylonians before they would be open to the new work of the Lord. Most, if not all of us, have a habit of smacking our heads against that exact same spot on the brick wall before we even think about maybe even just changing the angle <laughs> in which we smack our heads. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Not even Jesus. But unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces more fruit. Think about it. May God love us all and give us his peace. Amen. Now, during this Lenten season, we proclaim uh, uh, not, not the, the Nicene, Nicene Creed, but the Apostles' Creed. So I invite everyone to please stand and let us proclaim together what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We present our needs and our concerns to the one who has created us, and to the one who loves us. For the church, that God's covenant, which is written upon our hearts, may help us know the Lord more deeply and guide us in serving him each day, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church of Los Angeles, that our financial contributions to Together in Mission will enable even more ministry, education, and services to the parishes and schools supported by the campaign, we pray. Lord, hear for openness to forgiveness, that we may believe in God's desire to forgive us and accept it as a gift from God who remembers our sin no more, we pray. Lord. For all who lay down their lives for others, that our love may express itself in concrete actions of visiting the sick, feeding the hungry, and protecting the unborn, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, that God will send healing and strength to all who are ill or recovering from surgery and fill their hearts with hope and courage, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For national leaders, that God will help them to understand the needs of our day and inspire constructive dialogue that will enhance the common good, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For God's blessings on our parish and school, and for all who have gone before us in faith, 
including Dr. James Saltz and Richard Havoc. May they experience the peace and joy of God's kingdom, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. In the quiet of our hearts, let us lift up our prayers. And for an increase in faith, hope, and love, we pray. Good and gracious God, we know that you hear our prayers always. Hear these prayers we present to you now in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please join us in singing God So Loved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes will not perish they shall have eternal life i shall hold to the cross i shall hold to god alone for his love has salvaged me for his love has set me free for god so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes will not perish they shall have eternal I shall wait upon the Lord. I shall wait upon His word. And by His grace, I am released. By His grace, I am redeemed. For so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes will not perish they shall have eternal shall hold to the cross I shall hold to God alone for his love has salvaged me for his love has set me free for God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes will not perish they shall have eternal Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and your sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify us by the working of the sacrifice. We pray through Christ our Lord.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of our hearts, that, freed from disordered affections, we may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son of in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son of in the highest, O Son of in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and, giving thanks, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, a blessing into his hands, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks, you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. And bring your church to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Jose our Bishop, all the clergy, and your entire people. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her beloved spouse, with the, uh, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Peter, St. Paul, St. Martin of Tours, St. Mary Magdalene, St. Patrick, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. 
Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all anxiety and distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The bread of life, all who eat this bread will never die. I am God's love revealed. I am broken that you might be. heavenly bread all who drink this cup of the covenant you will live forever for I will raise you Who eat this bread 
Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion. We pray in the name of the one who lives and reigns forever and ever. And announcements? As always, we invite you to take home a copy of the bulletin. This Friday is the last Friday of Lent, and so we invite you to join us this Friday. We'll have adoration at 5.30, Stations of the Cross at 6.15, and our Lenten dinner at 7 p.m. on the bulletin board. There's the menu for this Friday. And on our website, if you look under church events and open up the event for this Friday, it has a reflection on the stations that we'll be praying as well as the Lenten dinner. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday. And there's actually two gospels. It's Palm Sunday of the Passion of the Lord. And so the very beginning of the mass, we'll have our first gospel, calling to mind Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And at the usual time, we'll have the Passion of the Lord according to Mark. So I encourage you to come a few minutes early, early. Otherwise, you will miss the first gospel. And you won't be able to tell family and friends that you're at Palm Sunday. You'll have to say, I was at Passion Sunday. And it's going to confuse them. We'll all enter through this door. The palm branches will just be outside. We'll take our places as we usually do. And at the beginning of Mass, we'll turn our attention to the main door of the church for the Gospel Proclamation, and then we'll have a triumphant entry and a beautiful song. I'm not sure what it is. You've got to come next week to find out. And all the Masses will be doing that. And so next week is Holy Week. And so as we continue to prepare, let us strive with God's help that daily prayer to stay focused, the fasting to reprioritize, and as always, acts of kindness and words of encouragement. A very special thank you to Father Tom 
for your presence in ministry. Father Paula, I was going to ask uh, for the Lenten dinner on Friday, are the lobsters pre-cooked or do you get to pick your own live lobster and then and well, have actually, it prepared for you? They'll, was... they'll be crawling. And <laughs> anyway, you want to get a faster one because they're healthier. You know, the, yeah. the ones that are easy to get, not so much. But go after the faster ones that are harder to find. Okay. People are going to show up on Friday demanding say that yes, was a joke. Yes. That was a joke, everyone. Oh, really? You're getting filet of fish like everybody else. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May the road rise up to meet us. May the wind be always at our back. May the sun shine warm upon our face and the rain fall soft upon our fields. And until we meet again, may God hold us in the palm of his hand, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This celebration is ended. The Mass of our lives continues. Let us go forth from the gospel with our lives. Thanks be to God. Let's sing the song, Be Not Afraid. You shall cross the barren desert. But you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands and all. sing together be not afraid be not afraid i go before you always come follow me and i will give God bless you all. May the Holy Spirit be with you. Good to see everyone. Be safe out there. Well, it's for runners.